All right, everybody, so now we're going to measure uh, permeability. This is the last of the physical characteristics that we'll look at in this class. And uh, the way I'm going to do that, I've got my same samples from the porosity test, uh, and then I've got some more water in 100 milliliter amounts. And then I've got these uh, special high-tech permeability tubes. These are uh, really expensive, uh, really hard to find, uh, but I've got connections. Uh, so if you look, it's just a plastic cylinder. It's totally hollow. Both ends are, um, well, this end is open. This end is also open, but it's blocked by a piece of cheesecloth, which you can see is basically like a fine mesh, and I've rubber banded it around. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the sample from the last test, and I'm going to put the 50, rough, roughly 50 milliliters of substrate into this tube, and then I'm going to pour... 100 milliliters of water through that substrate and see how long is it going to take for that to actually uh, drip through. Um, and that's going to give us a metric of permeability. The faster it drips through, the higher the permeability. permeability. The slower it drips through, the lower the permeability. So I'm going to go ahead and, and put my 50 milliliters of substrate in each one of these, um, and I'll do that off camera to save you some time. All right. Uh, made a big mess. Built some water, almost slipped and died. We're having a great time. Uh, that's what science is all about, slipping, falling, and dying. No, um, so I've got these tubes, right? These permeability tubes with the cheesecloth underneath. I've got the one with the rocks, uh, the sand, and the soil. I also did one with clay, just to show you. We won't take data on it, but just to show you how high the permeability, or how low the permeability of clay is. So again, what I'll do is I will take 100 mils of water and I'll dump it through the substrate in the permeability tube. And your job is to get out a timer right now, <clears throat> whether it's your cell phone or um, your trusty stopwatch that I'm sure you carry around everywhere you go. Uh, get out a timer and your job will be to time how long it takes the water to flow through. So I will tell you when to start and then when it stops dripping, um, more or less, you can uh, make the call on your own. Um, Let's see, I want you to be able to clearly see, and I'm wearing black, so it's gonna be hard to do that. Um, let's see what I can come up with. Okay, as you can see, I've got my high-tech science bib. I probably should get a lab coat, but I don't have one, so we're doing this instead. Okay, so first one's first. I got this is just to catch the water. Up first are the rocks or, or the gravel. So uh, once I start pouring the water, you start your timer, and once it stops dripping, uh, you stop the timer. Here we go. Okay. You can see that one's pretty quick, right? Now, there is not much ability for this gravel to hold on to the soil. So enter that number in your data table, and we'll do the next one. Uh, let's do sand next. Okay, okay, your stopwatch ready. I don't know why I'm waiting. You can just pause the video. Okay, here we go, 100 mils of water and 50 mils of, of saturated sand. Here we go. You can see the water is dripping pretty fast, but it's still, it's taking much longer than with the gravel. Okay, that's the sand. And the last one that you'll take data on is soil. This is the same potting soil that I used. Okay, uh, I got 100 mils of water. Here we go.
Okay, I think that'll do it. Um, <clears throat> that went a little faster than I expected. Maybe I didn't put enough soil in, or maybe I um, wasn't compacted enough, but that's okay. The data we get is the data we get. Um, all right, so that's all you need to take for the data. Uh, this last one is clay um, that I just want to show you. And if I did this right, it may work, it may not. There's some gaps in there. Um, I tried to put the stuff to clay in as tightly as I could so there would be no gaps, but we'll see. Um, there are a couple. So I'm going to dump the water through, and uh, maybe we'll see uh, a bit about clay's permeability. Maybe we, maybe it will be a fluke. Okay. Yeah, this didn't work. This did not work at all. There's a gap in between the clay and the plastic, so the water just went all the way through that gap. If I had stuffed this better, um, so the clay was uh, leaving no gaps, this would have taken like five minutes to drain through, and it's a, just a very thin layer of clay. So um, takeaway from that is clay has a very high permeability, or sorry, a very high porosity. It's got a lot of space in between the pores. It's got a very low permeability, meaning that water doesn't go through <clears throat> very quickly. What that does mean is that clay is very good to holding on to water, right? And porosity and permeability are going to tell us about a soil's ability to hold on to water, right? If it's got a lot of pore space and it, and it has a low permeability, water, there's plenty of space for water to hang out and it, it won't leave anytime soon. Whereas something with like gravel, right, it has a decent amount of pore space, not a ton, compared to something like clay, uh, it has a decent amount of pore space, but the water just passes right through. So this is this soil is not going to hold on to any water, right? <clears throat> uh, sand is, is kind of somewhat in the same boat. Um, it holds the water um, somewhat, uh, but not, not great. Um, soil, um, I might try to do another test with the soil with the permeability and see if we get the same data. Actually, let's give that a shot. Yeah, why not? All right, <clears throat> doing the same thing. I just want to give this, oh, I took my bib off. Shoot. Um, let's see if I can get it back on. I just want to give this a shot because um, the soil dripped through a little faster than I would have anticipated. And <clears throat> maybe that is the case. But uh, I'm doing something we often do in science, which is see if we can replicate that data. If I can do this, uh, same experiment and get the same results, then I know it's probably a little bit more trustworthy. But if I get very different results on the second time doing it, then I know that hey, maybe there's something else going on here. I need to take a look at my experimental methods. Um, this is called um, doing uh, 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 replication within your science. It's a very important way to, to test the robustness of your experimental design. See? You learn from your mistakes. Okay, here we go. So I got the soil, I got the bib of science, um, and I've got 100 mils of water. Let's do the timer on this and just see how it works. Oh, I said 50 mils of water, it should be 100. Okay, so this is kind of more what I expected. Yeah, this is much more what I expected. Um, maybe there was a gap in the soil last time. So you can see it's dripping a lot slower than the sand, much, much slower than the gravel, and even slower than the soil we used last time. Um, not sure why that might be. Um, maybe it was too compacted when I put it in the jar, maybe it wasn't compacted enough. Maybe it was less than 50 mils of soil. Uh, maybe like the clay, there was a gap between the plastic and the soil, I don't know. But we're still waiting. I feel like I should be talking right now. Or maybe we should just sit in silence awkwardly as we listen to the dripping. I don't know. You're not giving me any feedback, so I don't, I don't know what you want. This is like that water torture, you know, where they drip a drop of water on your head over and over again. Hopefully it's more pleasant than that. Still going, and still a decent amount of water in there, so we're just gonna keep waiting. I go, although I guess you could just fast forward through this. Ah, why didn't I think of that? I'm such a dummy. You're probably not even gonna think of that until I said something. Well, if you thought of that, good for you. You're basically a time traveler.
geez, I should have prepared a five minute stand up routine or something. It didn't occur to me that I would have to sit here awkwardly. <clears throat> Still going. Still dripping. And there's still a lot of water in there, you can see. Clay would be dripping even slower than this, if you can believe that. Like, we probably wouldn't even see the drop for a couple minutes. Okay, my arms are getting tired, so I'm gonna I'm gonna pull back. This is a great core workout, really feeling it. Right behind the bib area. <gasps> Nearly there, I think. Still some water in there, but almost gone. Okay, I think that'll do it. So as you can see, compared to the first time we did it, it was a lot slower, right? And more in line with what uh, results I, we usually get when we do this uh, experiment and more aligned with what we would expect to see as well. Now the bib can come off. Um, so when you think about the soil, you think about the porosity and the permeability and how those impact the, the substrate's ability to hold on to water, to retain water. Uh, it's water holding capacity that's gonna have a huge impact on the ability of things to live there, right? Because anything that lives there needs water. So uh, think about the water retention properties of each soil type and how that's gonna influence the ability for vegetation to grow there. Uh, okay, I think that's it for uh, the virtual component of the lab. Uh, after this, you'll do some analysis and then you'll do some experimental design of your own. Okay, see you later.